Jobtron. Hey, Jack. What's up, John? Shut up. Hi. I'm gonna come over there. I'm coming. I'll come. Remember when your computer looked like this and your screen looked like this? Ah, those wondrous and youthful days of gaming. Almost puts a tear right in my eye. Are you trying to cry? I gotta put on a good scene for the audience. And I gotta, I gotta put on a good show. It's hard to imagine that there was a time not so long ago when you couldn't just bring up gameplay footage of any given game at any given time. I like to call this era the age of mystery. Nowadays, if you're having trouble beating a game, you're usually just like, eh, fuck it. Go on GameFAQs, pick the one with the most hampersands hashtags in it. Look, they made that logo out of bells and whistles! How could they possibly be wrong? Man, back then it was a whole different story. If you didn't beat a game, that's it! Sorry, buddy, you're done for. Coupled with the fact that many of us still had our childlike minds when we played these games, the stakes were just built up so much higher. What's in that magical forest beyond the wall? Well, you'll never find out unless you beat the game! And at creating this vast feeling of adventure, no game even came close to King's Quest V. I chose that one because I like it. I have all of them, but I chose that one because I like it. I mean, you can leave! I complain in the complaint box, but I'll check that shit! <laughs> Quest 5, absence makes the heart go yonder. How dare you say that to me. So the game starts off with a wizard literally stealing a castle by using his magic. No, that is literally, word for word, how it begins. That is the, that is the beginning of the game. Well, uh, the king of said castle appears to be blissfully unaware of the event, seeing as he's just, uh, picking flowers, moseying along, just taking his time, just taking his sweet time. Can you please, um, I have a place to be? So after about three or four centuries of sauntering, our hero meets face to face with the unfortunate news. He's like, what? What has happened? I do not know, fine sir. Ooh, I know what happened to your castle. I saw it all, yes I did. You did? Well then, what happened? Yeah, what? So Hootsier explains to you that it was the work of the evil wizard Mordak that caused King Graham's castle to vanish. Oh, that's King Graham, by the way. And that you should go back with him to the land of the MacGuffins. Now that all sounds good and fine, except... Uh, Lord Graham? I know that you're really into standing there and having everyone admire your pecs, but you could, you know, look sl slightly interested in the fact that an owl just ate shit in front of you. That's okay, I'm sure you make up for your lack of personality with your pecs. So then the owl, uh, oh, by the way, that's Cedric the Owl. Sprinkles some dust on you and tells you it'll make you fly. What is that stuff? Oh, just some old leftover fairy dust I've been carrying around. Is that what the kids are calling it nowadays? I mean, in the 90s. Because this game was made in the 90s. So I can't use that joke. Come on! Up here! <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. As gracefully as the beautiful black swan. How could it possibly be so stupid and so magical all at the same time? Surely, we will never know. I mean, have you goddamn seen this guy? Okay, here I come! Oh my god, Graham, you're going down! Ooh, looks like the fairy dust just wore off! Oh yeah! It's real funny, ain't it? Ha ha ha! I almost just died, you piece of shit! Fucking owl, you suck! We then meet a wizard named... I, I don't even give a fuck. He takes you into his shack and presumably does horrible things to you. What is that? That's an old piece of magical white snake. That's an old piece of magical white snake. Magical white snake. Magical white snake. White snake. White snake. Here I go again on my own. I think I see a theme here. I really think I do. Let me just go ahead and use my patented Tron Bunk kit real quick to sort this out. Yeah. Yes, I see. Oh, that's righteous. That's good. Ah, there it is. It's clear now. I've got it. Everybody moves fucking slow. Everybody moves really fucking
fucking slow! I remember this game being one of the very first I played that had a true atmosphere to it. The birds chirping, the ambience, it all brings back good memories. Yeah, by the way, speaking of slow, you gotta crank King Graham's speed if you wanna beat this game inside of the next century. Graham, watch out! A poisonous snake! Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, let's talk about this. I'm gonna need you to never speak again, please. Is that- yep, yeah, are we- are we clear? Are we clear on that? I don't need a owl telling me what to do anyway. Oh, the owl was right. This game's just got so much polish. Every clickable key point has full narration to it, and I think, just between you and me, that it might be Wilford Brimley. Cedric is too busy looking around and doesn't seem to be paying any attention to Graham at the moment. That there is was Wilford Brimley impression. My pancreas doesn't work. <laughs> If you're going into town, I'll just wait for you here. Okay, shut- okay. Okay, shut up! Shut up! Just stop! I had a nasty run-in with a big dog once, and I feel much safer out here. Oh yeah? Well, why don't I go find that dog and ask him to come back here? It's- I scare you again. That's it! I'm out! I'm going where no one can ever hurt me again! No, Graham, do no. I have to admit, these are some of the funniest parts in the entire game. Just the multitudinous ways in which our hero can, how you say, bite the dust. <laughs> My god, he's a walking danger zone! Too bad. It looks like the eyes have it. Everything wants his head on a silver platter. The snake. The river. The desert. Bandits. Middle Eastern nomads. Greed. Greed itself wants King Graham. Cheer up, Graham. At least you can practice your game of tiddlywinks. Hey, fuck you, man. Hilariously enough, even as morbid as some of these deaths are, the narrator finds it in himself to recite you a pun about each one of them. Dying for a drink, Graham? Whoa. He who speaks with forked tongue should never be trusted. Blatant racism. Never trust a bad guy, Graham. Oh, now that's some insight. You. You got a gift. You're a funny man, narrator. Look, I don't even care. Let's go see what a bear has to say. <laughs> oh, okay. Look, there's no beating around the bush here. That bear just straight up decked me in the face. Just look at his stance. He's got the eyes of Muhammad Ali. And a butt of B. Arthur. I don't really know where to go in this game. I remember when I was a kid, it was just like, oh, hey, look, I found the fish. Do you want the fish? Do you want the fish? Just one silver coin each, but take your time. Well, maybe if you weren't so picky all the time, you could sell a goddamn pie once in a while. I've taken my business to the shoe place who's out of shoes. But we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. I'm sorry, is it Christmas in here? I can't tell. I don't know uh, what the fuck to do. Okay, look at me. Do I look like somebody who would know what the fuck to do? I just want to remind you, you're looking at the same guy who gave up on level two of Monster Bash. Phew. This is a hard work. I think you all know what time it is. Look at my pecs, I'm King Graham. Do I look like I give a fuck? Subsequently, is an addendum to that dot. Do I look at all like a king? No, not, not really, no. More like a mailman. King's Quest V, two day shipping's extra. Hey, did you know that I have a Facebook and I put things on it? When you fucking click like, click. Special thanks to Rubber Ross, Plasma 3 Music, and Hugo Junstrand. And also, a very special thanks to Jeff Fabre of Space Hamster Games. So hey, if you enjoyed this video, a quick like and a share couldn't hurt, could it? <laughs> also, don't forget to check out Did You Know Gaming, that is some good shit.